Welcome to another Lemon Amiga Game Guide and Review. This time we'll be taking a look at Ivan Stewart's Iron Man Super Off-Road Racer, produced by the Leland Corporation in 1990 for the Amiga and released through Virgin Games. This game is a direct conversion of the 1989 arcade original, also by the Leland Corporation, and the graphics have been lovingly ported from the arcade. So first thing we need to do upon pressing fire is to enter our name and this doesn't have any bearing on the uh, playability of the game whatsoever. Uh, you can also enter your birth date uh, for a little trivia and enter your nationality and then having completed that it's into the game itself. So as you can see Iron Man is an asymmetric 3D game where the player has to race their vehicle around a series of tracks. We play as the red vehicle and up to three players can participate at any one time. And the game is based on the arcade original. Let's just have a quick look at the 8-bit conversions first of all. I used to have this on the C64 and that's rather a valiant attempt there on the 8 bits to cover the format. Um, they're all much of a muchness really. The uh, master system has to be said has more levels and then let's switch over to the 16-bit conversions and you can see the arcade in the bottom corner is pretty faithfully remapped on the Amiga and perhaps the best conversion of them all uh, is the Super NES version. Uh, perhaps the Mega Drive there is a really good conversion but they are really enhancements of the arcade original whereas the Amiga as you can see tries to be a carbon copy so let's return to our track and continue collect the money and complete our first race first position that's what I like to see after each race all the money that the player has managed to collect can be used in the shop and we have spent it all on gaining an extra top speed which should speed us up over the next race and it's important to collect the money during each race to have the most to spend in the shop and to get the best upgrades and to get ahead of those guys so each race is four laps in total and at the end of the fourth lap the player in the lead will win and if you aren't the player in the lead you will lose and have to use a continue token to get on with the game but there are eight uh, tracks in the game um, 16 in fact on the SNES version and 12 on the Sega Master System version and surprisingly there are 99 levels in total yes those eight tracks will have to be driven forwards and backwards many times with the same computer opponents getting gradually more intelligent as the game goes on and the game increasingly becoming more difficult and I've never known anybody complete anywhere near the 99 tracks but you do get two continues and you can use those throughout the duration of course your score will be reset but you will gain the track progress to see many of the later levels so that's the wipeout course completed and that gives us another first place and a bit more cash so back to the shop this time I'll spend my money on acceleration acceleration there tires top speed or shock absorbers can be bought to increase your potential over each track and any spare cash can be spent by nitroles uh, you can see in the panel in the top right hand corner there the number of nitroles each player has I have nine and the rest have ten I've just used one there and you can pick up nitroles 
as the game goes on, you'll be able to drive over those for a number of extra. And there's also money bags there. You can see me picking that up at every opportunity. So it's best to save those nitros until you really need those and to use them to get in front of the lead player. And you have to be careful because if you crash behind or into the lead player like that, he will uh, knock you back and you'll have to waste extra nitros to get in front of him. So it's best to leave the nitros until you have a nice open patch of ground and then you can floor it without crashing into anybody. And so here we are, this is lap four. This is the final couple of bends before we hit the line. Just grab that money, 30,000 cash is well needed in this game. And let's get back to the shop. So money in this game really does come at a premium and those um, extra bags of gold will help uh, the winning score if you happen to win. Of course, if you don't happen to win, you'll have to use it but continue. So it's winning in this game or nothing, basically. And oftentimes you will start at the back of the grid. Um, in fact, I think that's generally the start position. So I wasted a lot of nitros there trying to catch those guys and it didn't quite happen. So the rest of the race will have to be spent painstakingly getting back to the front. Each course has its own variety of obstacles and in this particular course it's definitely the weaving section you can see on the top and if the player manages to get a good line they can drive straight through that weave and even turbo through that section at full power uh, just like that straight through it and straight into first place. If not, if the player crashes into the sides, the arm core barriers there which surround each track they will uh, crash or dive off an odd angle and they can also crash into the rear of the vehicle there which makes life more difficult for obvious reasons and the water jumps as well sometimes the water will slow you down and uh, if you hit the water just right you should be able to skid right over the top of that so that's a second place position for me I got 90,000 but unfortunately I'm going to have to use up one of those continues and I like to continue to buy that acceleration and top speed there as a number one priority to build up my momentum potential over each track. I don't really tend to go for the tyres until the later tracks and the suspension either until I've got way too much money to spare. So definitely the acceleration helps you to get to that top speed and once you get there the extra top speed will give you just that bit more. On this track the uh, Big Dukes track is probably the easiest one of the entire lot. All you have to do is get around there in an S shape and jump over that water. And there are flagpoles as well which you can jump into and they wobble. Um, I've seen on the Super NES version particularly there are many many more flags and uh, bales of hay which you need to drive around and that really is a more advanced uh, expansion to the game than the lowly Amiga version but really racking up those uh, cash bags there and as I say it really is easy to get in front of those guys on this course so it probably is best to take your time and drive straight for as many turbos and cash bags as possible. So I'll continue my upgrade route with the maximum possible uh, acceleration on there and then let's just go through a few of the specs of the game. Uh, the main coder and the manager of this project was a certain Steve Turner and he did the music for Rainbow Islands in 1990 and also helped to code Simulcra in 90, uh, Realms in 91 and Virocop and the AGA version in 95 and he ported the uh, system code from the arcade machine and to help him other coders included Gary Foreman who also went on to work on Realms the year after and also uh, David O'Connor and Jason Page helped with the coding as well. The graphics were mostly done by John Cumming who had done the graphics for Jeff Crammon's Stunt Car Racer in 1989, uh, Paradroid 90 and also some of the graphics for Rainbow Islands as well and the music was uh, done by Jason Page 
and Jason is again no stranger to the music scene on the Amiga. He went on to create the excellent piano introduction to Fire and Ice, the music for Putty Squad, the excellent techno rough and tumble soundtrack, and he also worked with Richard Joseph on games such as Flight of the Amazon Queen and Sensible Soccer, the very Sensible Soccer introduction musics. And even the introduction music to this review was created by Jason. It's called That's The Way It Is and it's a remix of an old C64 demo tune. And Jason Page is certainly one to look out for in the, uh, the remix scene. And he is, as far as I know, still involved with the business. So looking back at the game again, you can see I'm struggling once again to try and get to that first position. Uh, the graphics are well done, you could say. They're not as amazingly polished as perhaps uh, an AGA conversion would have done further down the line. And the playability, though, more than makes up for those stock graphics because the handling of the vehicle, despite my crashing incessantly there, the handling of the vehicle is generally spot on. The player can usually master the controls fairly quickly and they are in a kind of an arcade realm of controllability. Probably the biggest prevention of your progress is the other drivers. So as long as the player can control their own vehicle, with a kind of aptitude, then the rest is just basically avoiding everything else on track. And the controls and the playability of this game certainly stand up even after all this time. And it's one of the things that the reviewers highly praised when it came to reviewing this. So let's just use up the second of our two continues. Look at that zero in the bank, but we have virtually fast acceleration there, virtually maximum and then let's do this one again. So, I note about the music as well. The game comes with a variety of musics. Uh, different levels have their own music. Um, this one in particular is um, particularly hillbilly sounding to fit in with the Dukes of Hazard philosophy, perhaps the big Dukes course. So the musics throughout the game do change and you will get special musics on different levels. And the conversions are obviously from the arcade, so I think the uh, musician has done a pretty good job. Certainly the lack of music on the uh, Leyland's later games, the uh, Indie Heat, for example, doesn't have any music. So the music in this game was certainly memorable enough for me to miss such a thing in Indie Heat. So even though the graphics are nothing to write home about really, the playability certainly raises this game above the average and makes up for the lack of tracks. Only eight tracks in the game is certainly a limitation. But that's another one completed. Let's just get through the shop and show you another one of those special tracks. And for this, I'm going to buy some more top speed, more or less full there, full acceleration, and onto the track itself. And I'm not sure whether this is a unique track or whether it is another conversion from the arcade, I think it's a conversion. But this track features a cut through point, which you can see I've just driven by. It's very difficult to get into that cut through, but it is possible to get beyond the pack. And you might notice a series of elevation changes as well on this particular track, as they climb up and down hills and go through uh, valleys and water. So I think the, uh, the overall effect of the game and the seriously difficult players, they really do get difficult the uh, further you progress through the game and definitely after 10 or 12 levels the computer opponents really do give you no mercy when it comes to this kind of thing. So here we are, this is the last lap and I'm still in third. It's going to take me a miracle to get there because I have no nitros to spare and still in third, not looking like I'm going to do it. A squeeze for the line and look at that, what happened then? Well, it was a race for the turbo, and in that battle, I collected it, and I used it just at this point to get myself over the line. Very, very lucky indeed. So, that's how you can be so lucky in this game. It's all random factors, of course, with driving, give and take, added to the mix as well. So, let's buy ourselves the last upgrades before I begin my conclusion of this game. 
Um, Iron Man received a 35th rank best game of all time in Amiga Power issue 0 of May 1991 and the other magazine reviews Ace gave it 83% Amiga Action gave it 79 Amiga Format gave it 80 and the budget release garnered 93% in CU Amiga who concluded this was a faultless conversion with excellent controls and they also praised the smart opponents as well I think this game really stands up as a multiplayer game even though the other two players must use the keyboard it really stands up with many players playing at the same time the single player mode is obviously let down by the limited number of tracks and the frustration of those advanced drivers but thanks for watching my play guide review of super off-road racer cheers <laughs>